But it's important to understand that the entire nervous system, which is the nervous system around the gut, is also called the second brain. Because a lot of the information that we're receiving uh, in our brain, we're getting the message from our brain first, not from, I mean, from the gut, not from the brain first to go to the gut. See, a lot of people think this is running all of the show, but the enteric nervous system inside of our gut is also sending information up to our brains to tell us what to do, what we like to eat, what, uh, how much our body should weigh, whether we should be energetic, and all of, whether we should be happy, whether we should be sad, all of those type of things. Hey family, I'm Dr. Bobby Price, your plant-based pharmacist and nutritionist. You're doing life with Lakeisha on Living Her Truth. Welcome to the Living Her Truth podcast, where we have honest conversations about what it means to live a purpose-driven life. I am your host, Lakeisha Woodard from LakeishaWoodard.com, the place where women receive the tools necessary to feel seen, heard, and supported while pursuing their purpose. And now every week, you'll learn those same tools through candid and transparent conversations. Dr. Bobby, thank you so much for saying yes to having this conversation with me today. Thank you for inviting me. I'm glad to be a part of it. I am so excited for this uh, for this conversation. You know, there is a um, a little runny joke in my in my house around here because I'm following a plant based lifestyle the best that I can, and my husband is still a carnivore. So every time I see him eat a piece of chicken, I be like, "Dr. Bobby said." He was gonna be like, "Okay." <laughs> like, I know he's, he's probably <laughs> sick of me and hasn't met me. <laughs> it's, not, it's not you, Dr. Bobby. It's me. It's not you, though. Because <laughs> I told him, I was like, you want to come and, and, be, and be Dr. Bobby? He was like, no, I be Dr. Bobby. <laughs> but it's all love for you here, though, Dr. Bobby. It's all love for you here. Indeed, indeed. <laughs> but um, I like to start off every episode with just talking about how I come to know the person that I'm speaking with. And this okay. episode is no different. So, Dr. Bobby, I first learned about you through another podcast episode, actually, um, the Dreams and Drive podcast. You remember? Ah, remember? got you, got you. Yeah. yeah, that's a really good one, too. It, it, ooh, it was a really good one. I um, actually, I downloaded it on my phone right before I got on a flight. So I was able to listen to it throughout my throughout my whole flight and you just totally intrigued me and for several different reasons because number one I was experiencing like my body was just all out of whack at the time and I could understand what was going on with my body that was number one number two vegan anytime I hear somebody talking about veganism plant-based eating it always perks up my ears because it's something that I've always been interested in and then number three you're a black man I'm like okay what the problem <laughs> coming, coming through talking about it you know it <laughs> who's also a doctor so um so yes yeah, so I was really intrigued by really intrigued by your story so after I listened to the podcast I went and found you on Instagram and saw on Instagram that she was doing a book tour for your book, yeah. Education yeah. Over Medication. Yeah. Um, so I'm gonna have to put the link in the show notes for his book, guys. So definitely check the show notes for a link to his book, to his website, so you can buy his book. And uh, he was doing the book tour and he was coming to Houston. I was so excited. And I actually met you at the book tour here in Houston. Yep. And that conversation blew my mind and we'll definitely get in we'll get more into into that because I do want to ask you something in particular that you talked about during that conversation but that conversation blew me away so I bought two copies of the book and bought the herbal detox because like I said yeah. my body was just going through all type of whack and I was like man if this Dr. Bobby if he can you know if this herbal detox works <laughs> <laughs> I'm, really, I'm, really hoping that, I'm really hoping that it works. I put my faith in you, Dr. Bobby, but you didn't, you didn't let me down. <laughs> good, good. <laughs> you didn't let me down. So yeah, so that's how we ended up here. And once I started the podcast, you was like one of the 
top like five to 10 people that I needed to have um, a conversation with here on the podcast. So I'm so super excited that you're here. It's so, amazing how all that comes together. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, just, it's just crazy. So do more podcast yeah. episodes, Dr. Bob, because we need to hear you out here. <laughs> okay, <laughs> duly noted. So start off by telling us, how did you go from pharmacist to certified plant-based nutritionist? Tell us about that journey. Man, that's a long journey, but essentially, you know, I loved chemistry in high school. Mm-hmm. And I know that's odd, especially if you know my background. Like I, I grew up in the projects and, you know, I was really one of the first to graduate from the university in my family. So mm-hmm. falling in love with chemistry was something that it was just divine nature. It, it had nothing to do with my background, my experiences or nothing. And so I, I fell in love with chemistry and I made the connection between chemistry and medicine or traditional medicine or modern medicine. And so uh, because of that, that love and that marriage, uh, that's why I decided to take the road initially to medical school, but I ended up going to pharmacy school because I'm like, well, I wanna know more about medicine. I don't wanna know about diagnosing. If you know the medicine, you know the diagnosis. So that's how I ended up in pharmacy school. And um, after I finished, um, I had planned to really do as much community work in our community. Mm-hmm. And I was, I was going to churches and doing all this kind of stuff like brown bags where people could bring out their medications and I would check them for them mm-hmm. to make sure like the doctor wasn't giving them like two prescriptions of the same medications or they weren't getting too much of a dose or some of the side effects were coming through. It may have been a result of the medication. And so I was doing that and I felt like I was really like helping our community, helping them navigate like the prices of medication. And um, it wasn't until like, I had high blood pressure when I was in high school. I got diagnosed when I was 16, I think. And it was a little bit, it was stunning to me because I went for a physical for football. Mm -hmm. And when I did, and she told me I had high blood pressure even though all my grandparents died from a chronic illness by the time I was in 10th grade. The funny thing was I was in such good shape. Like I only had like 5% body fat. I was very athletic. I was very active. And so for me, I just didn't understand why I had high blood pressure if I was very athletic, you know? And so um, for almost 10 years, I lived with high blood pressure. Mm. Uh, And this, nagging sort of like an ominous cloud behind me thinking like one day I could possibly have a heart attack because you know my grandparents died and so I get out of school and I'm working 12 14 hour shifts eating everything possible because now I got money and uh, I gained a whole bunch of weight and finally I figured I need to do something about it and nothing I did work when I tell you I tried everything everything nothing worked And so out of desperation, I was just like, well, maybe I can try this plant-based thing for like 21 days. Mm -hmm. But I had no intentions of actually continuing after the 21 days. And in 21 days, I lost 20, like maybe 17 to 20 pounds. Mm -hmm. And it helped my blood pressure go down a little bit. And so I was like, well, I can do this for 60 days. Maybe it'll get her down to like, well, I don't have to take medication kind of thing. And I did it for 60 days and I lost 45 pounds. And not only did I lose 45 pounds, but it normalized my blood pressure. It normalized it to where now the doctor was bragging on my blood pressure. And that was the thing that really shifted me. It, it, it made me see that food is really medicine. Mm-hmm. And it just, it just isn't this phrase that was created thousands of years ago. And the other thing it did was it made me feel like a hypocrite because I thought I was really helping people. And when I was able to heal myself of something that I had, I give out, I probably gave out more prescriptions for high blood pressure than any other med. And every time somebody got a new prescription, I would tell them like, they would ask, hey, is this something I can get off of? And I'll tell them usually when people get on high blood pressure medications for the rest of their life. And so here I was, I had sort of tore down that whole theory. Mm -hmm. 
And now I was handing out the prescription still though. Now I had healed myself, but now I'm still handing. So I felt like a hypocrite and I ended up lose, leaving the pharmacy mm -hmm. and eventually deciding to change my whole philosophy to using food as medicine and herbs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you traveled. That added on to your education too, right? Traveling to the different countries to learn more about food. Yeah, so like eventually what happened was I got a call and got a, a job opportunity in Okinawa, Japan. Mm -hmm. And I was going to be working at a hospital, but I also asked about, they had a population I had read about mm -hmm. that live to 100, no disease, eat primarily a plant-based diet, mm -hmm. and they die in their sleep. And so I was like, well, that's the kind of people I need to see. I mean, I'm reading about all these studies, but like studies don't show you any real people. And so that's what I did. I lived in Japan for almost four years. And while I was there, I was just going up to the northern part of the island, sitting down with people who are 97, 102, 100 years old. And they were riding bikes uphill, gardening, having fluid conversations, like nothing I had ever seen that people mm -hmm. who are that age. You and that's really that what people at, at 70 years old, you barely see that. I mean, 60 today. I mean, yeah. the, the dementia population is growing so heavily that when I see people in their 60s, I'm starting to see the cognitive level started to diminish. So mm -hmm. seeing people who were literally 100 years old have fluid conversations and walk the neighborhood and pick fruit and it was just it was numbing to see it. You know, I lost, again, I lost my grandparents when I was in the 10th grade. They died relatively young. So watching them, it let me knew that, okay, this is how, if I live that long, this is how I wanna live. Like, I don't wanna be in a nursing home at 60 and have to live that way for 20 more years with dementia, high blood pressure, diabetes, kidney disease, so forth and so on. And so that was the proof in the pudding. It was, I, I was able to see where I was, mm -hmm. you know, as a 30 year old, 29, 30 year old person. All right, I'm ready. Hey, I, my body can heal itself if I give it twins. And then I was able to see people who were on the other end of the stick who are 100 years old mm -hmm. riding bikes uphill. I want to ride a bike uphill when I'm 100, picking fruit, having fluid conversation. I'm like, if I'm alive at that age, that's how I want to be. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I left there after four years and just, I didn't know what to do, to be honest with you. So I just said that, well, if there's people like this in Japan, maybe there's people other, where, other places. And so I just started traveling. You know, I went to China, I went to India, I went to Thailand, I went to Africa, Peru, Honduras, just studying with anybody I could find. A herbalist, a spiritual guru, a shaman anybody who was in charge of their village in terms of mm -hmm. like healing mm -hmm. that's the person i wanted to know and so i did that for a while and then basically came back here wrote the book of education over medication and put some of those stories inside of the book and sort of gave people you know uh some breadcrumbs on how to get their health back and reclaim their health mm -hmm. i love that you know the fact that you know you went to pharmacy school, you worked as a pharmacist. Um, I, like I said, I follow you on Instagram and I'm also a part of Tribe. So I yep. also know that you work with uh, different companies to create like the preservatives and stuff we put in, we put in food. So you have that background, the fact that you, you know, that you traveled, this is what draws, you know, draws me to you is because you have so much education from different sources and you still choose to be plant-based over, um, over eating meat. And it's not because of theory, you know, and it's not just based off of experience alone, which is nothing wrong with, with experience, but it's not just based off experience alone. It's based off of your, you know, your, um, uh, education as well. So that's, what's drawn me to you because like I said before, um, Plant-based eating is something that I've always been in and out on for a long time. A few years back, before you came to Houston for your book tour, I went raw vegan and I did it wrong because I was following raw vegans that was on YouTube. 
right? And so yeah. just following what it is that they were doing. Now, I did lose the weight. I was exercising as well. So I gained on the muscle and, and things like that. But it was like my body just, it's like Dr. Bobby's like, I woke up one day and everything just went in the, in the reverse. What I was doing, just eating a whole bunch of fruit, it was like, it just wasn't working anymore. The weight just started to just pile on. And so when I assess, okay, what was different? And it started to happen around a time, literally two months before I got married, because it was just a, it was just a stressful time. And so yeah. I started to gain weight a few months before my wedding. And of course I was freaking out, but yeah. <laughs> I was freaking out. And then after we got married, the weight just constantly piled on. And then yeah. like the end of the first year, I went to the doctor and I was told that I was pre-diabetic and <laughs> I just bust out in tears crying. Cause I'm like, how the heck am I pre-diabetic? Well, I'm the one that's eating all the vegetables. I was raw vegan. I was exercising. Like how am I pre-diabetic, you know? Right. So I, I amp up raw vegan just eating all these you know bananas or whatever because I just wasn't doing it right doing it right and so fast forward a few years later because I'm still gaining weight now I'm having digestive issues when I'm not yeah. even digesting my food properly like I live in Houston so when Harvey um came you know Harvey tore up Houston Texas really bad and so we was pretty much stuck here in the house no damage but we just definitely stuck here in the house and so we just had like a lot of canned foods my husband had you know a lot of hot dogs in the freezer we had to join those pizzas so this is what I was eating because we, we couldn't get to the grocery stores or anything like that gotcha. and you would have thought if you would have if you would have saw me you would have thought I was six months pregnant because whatever I ate it just sat there and my stomach started to protrude it got yeah. so bad that I just stopped drinking water because if I drink too much water, I'll get full, full, not satiated, just full where I don't want to eat because if I eat one more thing, I feel like my stomach is going to burst. And right. so it went from that to dry eyes, to having sores in my scalp, to my leg going numb when I'm laying down and I'm sleeping. And, you know, my lips started to, to dry and started to turn black. Like all of this, all of this yeah. stuff was going on. And I'm like, it's going, it's going on with me. And during Harvey, when the roles were clear, I went to GNC just to get some type of detox. And all they had was a detox that was liquid. And I'm like, oh my God, do you have anything else that's not liquid? Because this is not going to work. I'm not going to be able to get it down. <laughs> <laughs> and so the guy insured me, you'll be able to get it down. It's going to be okay. So I bought it. It didn't work. So all of this is going on. I hear your podcast interview and you have a different perspective because you focus on plant-based eating. And so I start following you and then you come to, uh, come to Houston and you talk about your detox. And I'm like, we're going to see. I'm going I'm to I'm have faith. <laughs> I'm going to have faith, you know, and, and hopefully this detox works. And I bought the 28 day detox I started in July of 2019 I started yeah I started in July of 2019 let me let me back up back up a little bit before that so October 2018 I lost my brother my brother was killed and so that was wow, really sorry hard. To hear that. thank you it was really hard on a family so the beginning of 2019 I started to, you know, I was grieving. So I started to go into a depression. I thought I was depressed and I probably was too, to a certain extent, yeah. you know, with the depression and then with the, all this stuff that's going on with my body, my body just out of whack. I literally felt like I was walking around with a cloud hanging over me. I had booked some speaking gigs that was coming up in the summer of that year. And I'm like, I don't know how I'm gonna be able to go on stage and talk because I don't even wanna get up in the morning. I don't even wanna do anything. And so I ended up having to go to Minnesota to visit family. I listened to your podcast. Then I follow you on Instagram. And then you came to Houston and I go and I show up and you talk about your detox and I take your detox. It was July, 2019, 28 days. 
And within like the first three days, I got an earache, but I finally got some relief. I was just like, oh my God, this is going to actually work. By the end of the 14 days, my whole attitude had changed. Like that cloud that I was walking around, it was like it had lifted. Even my therapist, because I had went and started going to see a therapist because, you know, grieving, even she was yeah. able to notice a difference in my attitude because I was just happier, right. you know, happier, you know, just a lot chippier, a lot more energy. And so at the end of the 28 days, I was like, man, well, let me just finish off the rest of July. And I did. And it was like a night and day difference. I felt yeah. so good. Now it wasn't like I, I lost a lot of weight, but you know, my leg wasn't, you know, uh, getting numb anymore. The sores that I had in my head, they wasn't there anymore. I was able to drink water, you know, the two point liters of water that you tell us that we need to get. I was able to, you know, to drink water. My skin started to clear up just from taking this, this detox and also right. following the food regimen, you know, as, as much as I, as much as I can, you know, right. and just from like being around you and listening to you on, you know, Instagram and things like that, I just started to do research and I realized that I possibly had leaky gut, yep. which is something that I heard about on YouTube. But to be honest with you, Dr. Bobby, I thought it was fake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought it was I thought it wasn't a real thing. And Fair I mean, I, I'm still not sure if that's what I had, but the signs are there. The signs were there. Yeah. And so far, I've taken your detox. Actually, I'm doing a detox now. Um so that was July. And then at the top of this year, I did the detox challenge with you. And so now yeah. I'm doing it. Now I'm doing it again. Don't even have, don't even have those problems anymore. Don't even have those Good problems. Stuff, man. It's amazing. So, yeah, it is amazing. It is amazing. So can you talk to us about why gut health is so important to live in a healthy lifestyle? Well, gut health is essentially our health in a nutshell. And what I mean by that is there's so many things tied to our health that when things go wrong, we, that we don't even attribute to our health. And I'll give you a case in point. And this will sort of give you an idea, even me of what, what you've been going through, you have gone through. 90% mm -hmm. um, of a molecule that we call the happy molecule, serotonin is made in the gut by the good bacteria in your gut. Okay, when somebody gets depressed, one of the first things they put them on is something called like SSRI, mm -hmm. a serotonin reuptake inhibitor to, to increase the amount of serotonin in their brain, mm -hmm. okay? Now, this is something that they give as medication, something like Zoloft, but if you have an unhealthy gut, you won't produce this molecule. So that'll lead to depression, okay? So that's the first thing that a healthy gut or unhealthy gut will do for you. The other thing that we know about the gut is it will affect your immune system. 80% of our immune system is made inside of the gut, the good bacteria, okay? A lot of people, when they hear good bacteria, what they're more familiar with or the term that they're familiar with is probiotics. Probiotics, yeah. Probiotics are good bacteria inside of your gut, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, there's a little small little civil war going on inside of your gut, good bacteria and bad bacteria. But the good guys always outnumber the bad guys in a healthy gut. Okay, and an unhealthy gut, the bad guys outnumber the good guys. Okay, you get bacteria overgrowth. Okay, and so what happens is it, when you don't have the good ba bacteria inside of your gut, mm -hmm. you won't have a healthy immune system. You will have things that happen like skin conditions, uh, poor circulation, you will have uh, allergies. You will have sleep problems. You will have be lethargic. All of those type of things are tied to our immune system, okay? And we do a lot of things that will actually impair our immune system. Things like taking ibuprofen and Tylenol, they kill the good bacteria in our gut. Uh, things like antibiotics, they kill the bad bacteria, but they also kill the good bacteria as well. Mm -hmm. Stress, stress will kill the good bacteria in your gut. So. We essentially live a lifestyle 
when you count for, you know, alcohol, processed foods, we're killing our good gut bacteria every day. Okay, so mm -hmm. the bacteria in our gut or our healthy gut is also responsible for our immune system as well. Okay, mm -hmm. the bacteria in our gut will also help to um, increase the amount of vitamin D, which is also connected with our immune system as well. Okay, also, we now know this is new information that has come out in the last decade, but we now know that they do what's called fecal transplants, where they take the feet, the feet, uh, the fecal matter inside of one person and transplant it into another person. And if that that one person they transplanted it from is slim and they put that fe fecal matter inside of the person who is obese, mm -hmm. that person just gets obese without even changing their diet or exercise. So it tells you that the bacteria in our gut is also connected to our weight as well. And so I can keep going on and on explaining how important the gut is to our health, but it's important to understand that the enteric nervous system, which is the nervous system around the gut, Mm -hmm. is also called the second brain because a lot of the information that we're receiving uh, in our brain, we're getting the message from our brain first, not from, I mean, from the gut, not from the brain first to go to the gut. See, a lot of people think this is running all of the show, but the enteric nervous system inside of our gut is also sending information up to our brains to tell us what to do, what we like to eat, what, uh, how much our body should weigh, whether we should be energetic and all, of, whether we should be happy, whether we should be sad, all of those type of things. And I always tell people, it's important to understand that a lot of times when your body is going out of wet, these are check engine lights. This is just your body saying, hey, something's wrong. And the longer you let the check engine light go on, the more check engine lights will come on as a result of that. And so you can't just turn the check engine light off by going to the pharmacy, getting your prescription, and then it dulls the signals and now you don't feel the symptoms anymore. That's essentially like turning off the check engine light in your car, but not changing your oil. You gotta change your oil. And so essentially that's what the detox does. It's essentially like changing your oil instead of just turning off those, uh, those signals or those check light signals that are coming on or displaying themselves to you mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I I'm a I'm a witness to that because the more I tried to fix the problem it was like the worst that it got and yeah. it lasted for it lasted for several years you know it just it was just problem at the problem at the problem that was happening and I would go to the doctor and ask the doctors you know like what's going on with me you know what Dr. Bobby I I went to the doctor and then I told him that I wasn't pulling like I was supposed to. I was like, what is the average, you know, number of times a person need to go? And she was just like, well, it just depends on the person. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not going at all. So are you telling me that's so you tell me that's normal? You tell me that's the average? Until right. I found, you know, until I found Dr. Bob and I was just like, okay, I know I'm not crazy. <laughs> yeah, I, I always tell people that it a lot of questions are unfair to physicians. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I say that is because they don't teach us these things in school. Now, we're having a conversation with you about it, but mm -hmm. we're not giving you an educated opinion. We're giving you a layman's opinion because these aren't things we're taught and educated about. And so they don't like, unfortunately, like when you go, like when your doctor goes through medical school, they don't really have to take nutritional classes. Only about five schools in America actually require one nutrition class. OK, mm. uh, and so when you're asking questions about food, when you're asking questions about things that just aren't paid attention to in modern medicine, mm. like bowel movements aren't paid attention to until there's blood in the school. That's the only time that they're they're going to say, OK, we need to do something about it. But if no bowel movements are coming out, it's like, well, I don't know what to do about that. You know, it's like, there's no education behind it. So it's an unfair question to it. And in many cases, instead of giving you an answer, they should just say, I, I really don't know, but that's not what your doctor can tell you. Your doctor can't tell you, I don't know. So it's an unfair question. It's like running up to a police officer and you got a trial case um, 
you know, later that day, and let's say it's for capital murder, and you run up to a police officer and ask them for, you know, some legal advice. Mm -hmm. Now, it seems like because a police officer arrests people, they should know something about law, but that is not what they do. Mm -hmm. So it looks like a good idea, but it's not a good idea. That's not their lane. Mm -hmm. You're right. Because if she would have told me, I don't know, I would have been like, what do you mean you don't know? You're the right. <laughs> What do you mean you don't know? Like I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have been able to accept that answer. I still didn't, you know, accept that that answer. Um, so yeah, she wanted to like put a two down my throat, and I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm not doing all, I'm not doing all of that. If you can't even right. give me a specific answer, then why would I let you put a put a tube down my throat? So I was fighting them because they wanted to put me on pre-diabetes uh, medications and then high blood pressure medication because then my high blood blood pressure went up, you know, over that yeah. time too, they were taking the detox. And I'm just like, I have to figure something else out. So you were literally like an answer to a prayer. You was literally like the solution to, to the problems that I was having. And the fact that you are all about food I'm like, it has to, it has to be the food. And because that's where, how you teach, you know, that's another reason what drew me to you. And yeah. so I want you to break down the difference between veganism and, and a plant-based lifestyle, because there's definitely, there's definitely a, a difference and people probably don't really quite know what the difference is. Yeah. And I just did a YouTube video on this that I'm going to post pretty soon, but okay. I, it was inspired by A, a follower asking me that question, and B, I go out to restaurants all the time, um, and when I do go out to them, and I'm trying to order something off of the menu, I'm using have, having to piece something together if it's not a vegan restaurant, and so I'm asking a lot of questions to the waiter, and sometimes even bring out the chef. And I could just tell by the way they respond to me, uh, they don't even know what it is. They don't, <laughs> and they're in food. You understand? Like they'll still say, bring me out something that still has milk in it. And I'm like, okay, you, I'm sorry, I didn't communicate it properly. So I understand why you're asking the question. So veganism is a movement that was created in 1944 by a man named Donald Watson. Uh, he founded the Vegan Society which was basically a society that was dedicated to compassion for animals and love for animals, which included not eating any animal products or buying animal products, okay? So no leather coats, anything like that. Okay, so the whole vegan movement was predicated on let's have love for animals, more compassion for animals. It wasn't founded on the idea of eating healthy. And I think that's the big important thing because now as we fast forward, you know, 70 years later, you know, um, now the vegan movement, you know, when I, I first went plant-based or vegan, depending on how you look at it. When I first went plant-based in 2011, it wasn't a cool thing. Like I didn't know anybody who was vegan. I wasn't even familiar with the term vegan. I called myself plant-based then. And so now today after what the health, everybody is familiar with the term Nobody really knows what it is, but, you know, I think the beautiful thing is, is that it's encouraging people to eat healthy, but the dark side to it is all of those fast food companies that was making trash foods are now navigating and migrating over to the vegan market to take advantage of it. So they're creating a lot of vegan junk foods and those foods are just as unhealthy as animal based products. Okay. So that's veganism. It could be a good thing if you look at it from the perspective of, okay, I'm going to have compassion for animals, but I also got to have compassion for myself. That means I need to eat plants. Okay, that could be a good thing, which leads me into what is plant-based. Plant-based is essentially I eat plants. If it didn't come from the ground, like Dr. Sebi said, I'm going to put it down. Uh, it either comes from a bush, the ground, uh, a tree, that sort of thing. So it is plants. It has one ingredient. And so that's the important difference between the two. Being plant-based just simply says my diet is focused on plants, okay? Mm -hmm. And I can even break that down a little further because you also have alkaline, 
you know, being alkaline and alkaline is I'm plant-based, but I only eat plants that aren't hybrids. Okay. And I talk about that in my book. Yeah. So if people are interested in diving into that rabbit hole, they can in my book. I talk about it in the chapter, I believe, Seeds of Deception. But um, yeah, so there's varying levels of it. And I always tell people, if you're looking to reclaim your health, if you're looking to maintain your health, then don't use labels to do it. Just eat plants and, um, you know, navigate your way through that because all plants aren't created equal. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, you do talk about it and you do talk about it in your book. And I know I drive my husband crazy all the time because I'm like, <laughs> I'm like that, that fruit has been sitting there for a while. We're not buying that again because that's, it's something, it's something wrong with that. It's, um, it's a little scary because a lot of fruits and vegetables are hybrids. And so we don't know if it's genetically modified or, or what. So it's, it's a little scary out there. So all we can do is do what we can. And so I know I've learned a lot from following you and from being in, in tribe. And, yeah. um, and like I mentioned before, you worked at the different um, companies who made the different preservatives and the food coloring that they put in, you know, processed food so it can last on, so it can last on the shelves. And that um, amazed me when you talked about it at the book tour that you did down here in in Houston, because you talked about, you know, toxins in our in our body because it's not just the food that we put in our bodies but it's like the pollution in the air like all these different things you know contribute to the toxins that you know that we have in our body but dr bobby you know what else that you can do really well break things down like i love how you can break things down and make it into really really simple terms because one of the things that you talked about at the book signing that sticks out to me you said, you told us in the audience, you was like, I can probably do a blood test on you guys right now and find some form of cancer in your body. Yep. And, and you start, and you broke down how our bodies dispel toxins. And it like blew me away because yeah. I, because I didn't know. And from that day forward, I was just like, okay, I need to be more conscious about the products I put on my body. So I'm even starting to buy, you know, uh, toxic free um, products and stuff like that, like deodorant and lotions and stuff like that. But for the community who was not there, for my audience who was not there, talk to us a little bit about that. Why, why, how come you can probably do a blood test and find cancer in our bodies? Well, the unfortunate thing is that the vast majority of like processed foods and a lot of the cosmetic and hygienic products we do, we use today, they're actually creating cancer in our bodies. Um, And the unfortunate thing is that a lot of these foods look harmless and taste great and are very addicting. And so they put us in that vicious cycle. So each day uh, we wake up we live in a totally different world today as compared to our grandparents 60 years ago. You know, today the water is toxic, the air is toxic, the food is toxic. You know, the, all the products that we buy over the counter are uh, toxic. Whereas you go 60, 70 years ago, everything was close to natural as possible. I mean, even if you ate meat back in the day, you had to go get it from a butcher. They just cut it. You understand? like. 80 years ago, there were no refrigerators, okay? So you had to have everything fresh, you understand? So like, we're in a different age and time today. Whereas everything, you can get anything on the hour, any time of the day. I mean, you can get fruits and vegetables that don't go in the winter, in the winter. Yeah. You know, so like, we have to understand that all of those, all of those conveniences have been created through chemistry. Like when you go into a supermarket, the vast majority of the supermarket is shelves Mm -hmm. with jars, bags, and, um, you know, you know, things with wrappers that have expiration dates. Mm -hmm. Okay. These things are able to have an expiration date of one year, two, three, five years from today, because they put chemistry in it. Mm -hmm. It's not magic. And that chemistry that they put inside of the food accumulates in our body. We don't just eat it and it goes out of our body. We know that because most people are constipated. And even if you are that 
very fortunate person who has regular bowel movements, you're still accumulating that toxicity in your body if you're eating it, putting it on your skin, so forth and so on. Because again, like we just live in a toxic world today, okay? So in the example that you gave that, or I gave when I was out in Houston, if I were to take a sample of a hundred people's blood today, mm -hmm. I would guarantee you around about at least 20 of them will have cancer in their blood today, okay? But what's important to understand is like, you can literally go in for a checkup and that can happen. Yeah. And they'll go right into chemo the next week, right into radiation, right? But what's really important to understand is that it is normal to have cancer in your blood at some point because their immune system is designed to actually stomp out that cancer on a very continuous basis. And you, ne you never even know that you actually had cancer in your body, okay? But there was this doctor up in Michigan and he literally was misdiagnosing uh, African-Americans intentionally as having cancer and he was giving them chemo and he was giving them radiation, uh, $70,000 treatment and he got 48 years in prison for it. So you have to understand that's a case where a doctor was intentionally doing something wrong, mm -hmm. but there are cases where you have to understand you go into the doctor that day your blood pressure may be high as hell because you were mad at your husband earlier that day, okay? But that he will instantly put you on medication, you know, based off of that one blood pressure check for our two or three blood pressure checks for that day. But you have to understand your health is this dynamic thing moving up and down. You have all of these defenses in your body that are protecting you. You got your immune system that is protecting you against pathogens and cancer. You have your stem cells that help to rebuild tissue. You have all of these things that are mechanisms in our bodies that are designed to heal and restore the body. And so it's important to understand that you have to be in alignment with nature to get those full benefits. When you're not in alignment with nature, and what I mean by that is eating healthy, getting sunlight, getting exercise, drinking water, getting fresh air, mental relaxation, those type of things. When you don't have those type of doctors, I call those the real doctors. When you don't have those type of doctors in your life, then your health is going to plummet. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and by being a part of Tribe, you have, you know, even with the challenge that we did this, you know, this past summer, you incorporated all of that, everything that you just said, the rest to sound like, you know, that you incorporated that in, in the challenge to help us with, our immune system to build it up uh, for the winter, for the winter months, yep. Yep. you know? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I've been re-educated just by being a part of, of tribe. I've been re-educated on food and toxins just in general, what to do, what not to do. Now I'm not saying I'm perfect because I'm, I'm still, you know, I'm still human, but just being re-educated has empowered me. It just, yeah makes me feel empowered and it's like I have more choices and I know that sounds crazy because people think <laughs> when you go plant-based you don't have you don't have nothing to eat but it's it's right. really totally the opposite because it's like it's everything in the produce section you know right. that you that you can eat so Dr. Bobby if you don't mind I would like for you to re-educate my community on some common healthcare um, tips that's out yeah. there that we can read, find, Google all the time because it's just what I realized is that I was miseducated until I joined Tribe. Yeah. So the first thing is counting calories. Re-educate us on counting calories. Well, uh, you know, like my first degree is actually exercise physiology. Mm -hmm. And so like the whole, it's, it's funny, like the whole premise of exercise is calories right? Create a cal calorie deficit, you'll lose weight, okay? Create a calorie deficit, you'll lose fat. And, you know, what I came to understand that was different in the science that was being left out mm -hmm. was that if you take one pound of fat, one pound of fat is like 3,500 calories, mm -hmm. okay? That's one pound of fat. Okay. Do you know how many calories you lose? Let's say you ran a, a marathon, which is 26 miles in one day, 
and people run it in like four or six hours. So it, let's say you ran for six hours and you ran a 26 mile marathon, how many calories do you think you will burn? Shoot, 3,500. <laughs> you, you burn around 2,400 calories. Oh my goodness. So I don't so, so think about that. And one, in one pound of fat, there's 3,500 calories. Mm -hmm. But if I ran a marathon, which people don't do, yeah, it's 2,400 calories. I didn't even lose a pound lose using pound. that science. So it just tells you like that science is off. Like it doesn't make sense. You can't go calorie for calorie because every calorie isn't the same. Meaning the calories you get from fruits, vegetables, and nuts and seeds yeah. versus the calories you get from mac and cheese and fried chicken, they are not the same calories. So you can't mm -hmm. count those calories as the same because a large majority of the calories that you eat from plants, they actually go into nourishing your body. They actually go into healing your body. Whereas opposed to the other foods, mm -hmm. they don't do that. So you can't use that whole myth of I'm going to burn this amount of calories to lose that amount of weight because I can tell you most people don't do that. Mm -hmm. and, I'm, and I'm one of those people, you know, and that information right there set me free. Can they check you? Can they check out Tribe? Because I know I'm talking a lot about Tribe right now. Can I put a link <laughs> for people to join Tribe in the, in the show notes as well? Is that possible? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tribe Healing Community. And it's just basically me guiding, like, you know, guiding you guys through the process of, all of this misinformation and educating you, giving you tips. Mm -hmm. uh, even like this month, we're gonna be going through a whole pro, uh, COVID protocol that we'll be talking about the whole month of November, so yeah. Okay, cool, because I know I, I keep bringing up Tribe because being a part of Tribe, knowing that piece of information helped me out a lot too because when you eat eating plant-based, you know, when you eat eating collard greens, collard greens probably have 10 calories for every six cups. So if I'm counting calories, then I'm not eating enough because I'm just trying to be, you know, just trying to have these small meals, if you will. But yeah. once I learned that information, I'm like, oh, well, shoot, well, that's the case and I can just eat. Yeah, you can liberate yourself. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what you did, Dr. Bobby, you liberated me. <laughs> <laughs> you liberated me. Okay. So another common uh, misconception or myth that's out there is that eating six to seven meals a day is healthy. Eating six to seven meals a day is grazing. That's what cows do. And cows have six stomachs. So they're able to do that. They're able to eat throughout the day and process food like that. Our bodies actually aren't designed for that at all. Our bodies are actually designed to be in a state where we actually don't eat. So it, it actually mimics more of like an intermittent fasting period mm. where you go either 12 or 14 hours during the day not eating. And that includes eight hours when you're sleeping. So let's say it's two hours before you sleep, you don't eat. So let's say you stop eating at seven yeah. and then you go to sleep at nine and then you wake up at nine. So now you been asleep for 12 hours. Okay, and then you decide I'm not gonna eat until uh, 12. Well, that's a 15 hour intermittent fasting period where your body's been in a fasted state. When your body goes into a fasted state, it actually can divert the energy that it would have been using for digesting food mm -hmm. to towards healing, to sort rejuvenation, to rebuilding, you know, organs, tissues, the blood, things of that nature. So. Our bodies more more likely mimic not eating a whole lot, not having snacks between meals, but we actually resemble the the eating lifestyle of a cow, where you just eat throughout the whole day. We have breakfast, then we have a snack between breakfast and lunch, and then we have lunch, and then we have another snack between lunch and dinner, and then we have dinner, and then we wake up and we go right into the routine again. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So. That was probably the hardest thing for for me to for me to break, and I'm still working on it because I just been conditioned, been conditioned to eat seven meals a day because that's yeah. what we re that's, what, that's what I've heard, that's what I've done, and when I was at my healthiest, that's what I was doing. I was yeah. eating six to seven, you know, six to seven meals a day. Well, I say health, I'm doing healthy in quotes because then my body 
you know, turned on me. But um, that was probably the hardest thing. And I know people probably looking at, probably listening to like what their lips turned up, like whatever, Dr. Bobby, we're going to eat these six or seven meals. But <laughs> y'all better y'all better listen to Dr. Bobby. I'm trying to tell you. Now this one right here, Dr. Bobby's going to knock people out of their seats. Okay. <laughs> Breakfast is the most important meal of the day. It's actually the worst meal of the day. And I, and I know like people kill me about that one. But the reason why they call it breakfast is because you're breaking a fast. As I said, while you're sleeping, hopefully you're not in REM reaching for donuts or reaching for things to eat while you sleep. So you're not eating while you sleep. Mm -hmm. So while you're sleeping, you're in a fasting, fasted state. So they call it breakfast because you wake up and you break the fast, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, as I told you before, there's huge benefits from actually extending the fast beyond 12 hours, okay? Your body goes into this state where it starts to heal itself. And so that's why I say actually breakfast is the worst meal is because you're pulling yourself out of that fasting state. I always tell people the best thing you can do, the best breakfast is actually uh, like a warm ginger tea with key lime in it. That's really the best breakfast you can have, okay? And a lot of people depend on breakfast because they think that's where they're getting the energy from. And so you do get this usual kick because of the type of food that people eat is mostly sugar, like pancakes and that kind of stuff, bread, yada, yada, yada. Coffee. Yeah. So, yeah, that's going to give you an initial kick. And then what people experience, just like when they drink coffee, they go up and then they come down. OK, because there's a sugar spike and then there's a drop off. OK, and so that's why I recommend to people. If you get into a routine where you stop eating breakfast and you just start having the cheese or something like that for breakfast, mm -hmm. if you get into a routine, your body will switch with you. And when it does switch with you, it will notice, hey, we're not eating anymore in the morning. So let me divert this energy that I would have been using for breaking down food, metabolizing food, digesting food, utilizing food, and then eliminating the food. Let me take all that energy and, okay, let me heal this, you know, tissue over here let me hear this organ over here and so yeah I, I actually don't recommend people eat breakfast for that reason mm -hmm. and what you just said um contradicts something else that's that's out there too and that's the fact that if we go long periods of eating then our bodies will store fat which you just said that's not even the case that's when our bodies will use that energy to actually heal itself yeah and when you get into that fasted state Mm -hmm. Your body will start to not consume protein or muscle. It'll start to consume fat. So when you go into that fasted state, you, since your body doesn't have what's called glucose or sugar, mm -hmm. it will say, well, the next best thing is going to be fat. Because the way the body burns fuel, it burns it in an order. It will burn first the sugar. Okay. Mm -hmm. When I say sugar, I'm talking about fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, whatever sugar you're providing your body with, it will burn that first. The second thing that's going to burn is fat because fat is the storage of, you know, food. So that fat can be burned and then released for it for energy known as ketone. So it'll create ketone bodies when you burn down the fat or fatty acids and then create energy. The very last thing that your body will use is protein because the body never wants to just eat itself, okay? So the last thing you will use is protein. So if you got plenty of fat to burn, then it's got plenty of energy to, to use. Mm -hmm. I know that's going to hopefully set somebody, set somebody free. Because I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> that makes sense and let me just emphasize you guys when he said sugar he meant natural sugars not yeah. the sugar sugary cereals and the white sugar that you not, put not that sugar not added sugar sugar that is that is in a plant <laughs> sugar in the plant absolutely so we talked a lot about you know the plant-based lifestyle Give give some give people three tips that they can implement today if they don't want to go like cold turkey because they just can't put the chicken down, but they hear what you're saying and they want to make a change. Give them three tips that they can implement today to help with the transition. I would say add before they subtract. So adding more healthy plant-based foods into their diet before they start subtracting, because in many cases, 
when people start taking away certain foods, it feels like a funeral. And so I don't want them to feel like grief about getting rid of shrimp and that sort of thing. Um, so add before you subtract. So add healthier foods. As you add those healthier foods, slowly talk, start to take away the foods that aren't nourishing. Uh, the second tip I would say is try out some local plant-based restaurants in your neighborhood. If you don't have any local plant-based restaurants in your neighborhood, then go online and find new recipes to actually make plant-based recipes with. Okay, so like start incorporating, you know, a meatless Monday or a meatless Monday, Wednesday, and Friday mm -hmm. into your uh, regimen. That way you can slowly start to divvy away the unhealthier foods. Um, so that's the second tip. And then the third tip is get guidance. Um, it's not always easy to navigate this by yourself. So read books, uh, find somebody who aligns with um, how you learn and how your brains, it, it, your brains accept new information. And I think that will help really navigate you along the process because, you know, like, the unfortunate thing is like this whole new plant-based movement has created this whole plethora of people who are now saying, hey, I can teach you how to eat well. And I think what people don't understand is that like, it's not that simple. Yeah, It's not that simple because we have allergies. It's not that simple because people's bodies are different. It's not that simple because people have different uh, states of health, you got unhealthy people, you got people who are very healthy, you got people who are dealing with conditions, you got people who are dealing with certain type of, um, you know, food addiction. So it's not always as easy as finding somebody who is saying, hey, I did this and then I can help you. So find somebody who resonates with you uh, and who makes you feel like, okay, this person I think can really help me. Like I really resonate with how they teach. Um, I think those are the three best tips that I can give uh, if you're starting out your journey and just trying to eat healthier and live a longer, happier life. Those are some great tips, um, Dr. Bobby. I know with the first one about adding, not subtracting, like I mentioned earlier, my husband, he's, he's a carnivore. He has no intention on going plant-based, but I'm, I'm going to get him there because <laughs> I've been, <laughs> I've been um, fixing, you know, plant-based dishes and some of them he actually really like. And I'm like, mm-hmm. Come on over, come over. You don't, don't, don't even notice it, the Jedi mind trick that I'm doing, don't you? But, uh, <laughs> but just adding those, you know, plant-based side dishes, you know, to his his chicken, his turkey, or whatever. Um, he's starting to he's starting to enjoy it. So is he going to okay, be good. tomorrow? No, but at least he's he's open to it. Um, he's open to it now. So that's definitely a good tip. So you guys, that works. And I love the fact that you said get guidance. Um, I'm always talking about here on the podcast, building a support system. And yeah. I feel like tribe is another whole separate support system for me when it comes to just staying on track for plant-based eating, because I go into the group all the time just to scroll, like, let me see what people are eating today. Cause I don't even know what to fix. Let me see if there's something I can fix really quick. You know, right. cause I don't have the time to Google a recipe real quick. I just want to go to the store, get some ingredients and whip something up real quick. So right. Bob helps out a lot. And you know, how you say that um, people have different conditions, allergies and things like that. So you can't just talk to anybody. That's what draws me to you, Dr. Bobby, because you have that formalized education in addition to, you know, your, your personal experience and then traveling all around the world. So I don't even follow all of those uh, raw vegan people on YouTube anymore. I just listen to you because you have that formal education. And I love the fact that you take the time in tribe to do Q and A's and to talk to us where people can ask their specific questions. Like yeah. hey, Dr. Bobby, I have experienced this. Can I, what can I eat to, you know, take care of this, you know, because, yeah. um, that matters. That matters. Yeah. Because you just yeah. never know what condition someone is in. Yeah. And then an important note, just you know, for clarification, I'm not saying just because somebody's not credentialed, like they yeah. don't know what they're talking about. I'm definitely not saying that. I'm just saying make sure you get somebody that resonates with you and your journey. Mm -hmm. 
because if you're going to if you're if you're starting to walk and you're going to Miami, Florida, and you're walking with somebody who is also going to Florida, but they're not going to Miami, then you could be on a journey not going where you really need to go. Yeah. And so it's just really important to find somebody who resonates with you and who can guide you along that process. So that's the most important thing. And make sure they have the experience in terms of like um, navigating your process because I mean, it is, it is complicated. It is complicated. People's health is very complicated today. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I mean, you may have somebody who has high blood pressure, diabetes, high cholesterol. They also may have an autoimmune condition and food allergies. And you got to navigate all of those conditions along with all of the prescription medications, along with all of the supplements, along with, you see what I'm saying? Like it yeah. becomes very compounded and complicated. And so when, when you're in a situation like that, you have to make sure you find somebody who resonates with you on that level. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Thanks for that clarification. But Dr. Bobby, this has been amazing. You're awesome. Okay. Have you heard that you're awesome today yet? I, I appreciate it. <laughs> it means the world to me. Thank you so much. You are awesome. But before I let you go, two more questions. One is give us an Audible book or book recommendation, but I'm addicted to Audible. I love Audible, um, of a book that you have read or listened to that has inspired you in some way. Um, the Power of Now. Ooh. The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. Um, yeah, it really changed my perspective on being present. And it changed my perspective on just this whole life experience. So I would highly recommend that one as a book. Okay, I'm gonna have to check that one out. I haven't heard of that one, The Power of Now. You guys check the audible recommendations in the show notes for The Power of Now and also for Dr. Bobby's book as well. And last question, Dr. Bobby, when describing the meaning of living your truth, complete this phrase. I'm going to give you two words and you tell me what your third word is, okay? Okay. Self-awareness, purpose, and... Love. Ooh, I love that. Love, man. Love is so powerful, especially when you live and lean into it. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think people cringe at love. I think when they think about it, they love it. Conceptually, people love love. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to the experience, people are so afraid. But when you lean into it, like all the way, like when you had that crush when you were 12 or 13, yeah. when you lean into it, it's very powerful. It's not only powerful for you, but it's powerful every, for everybody else around you to witness that. It's just like witnessing a couple who is truly in love with each other. It just inspires you. It inspires you to want to love deeper and it, it inspires you to be want, want to be loved like that. And so I would say love just because like, I really believe outside of, outside of plants, like it is the most powerful thing for your health. Mm, mm, that was beautiful. Thank you, Dr. Bobby. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs>